Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Mr. 500 here, and we're going to do it again. we back at it again, and hopefully we're going to learn a lot of the good stuff, and this time the good stuff is a little bit of that geometry, a little bit of that basic quadrilateral perimeter and area questions, okay? These are the most basic ones. These are the easy ones, ladies and gentlemen, and that's why I got to get them out of here. We got to make sure we can handle them because we don't want to get the easy ones wrong, all right? Well, before we start a quadrilateral, four sides. And we're dealing with the most basic ones of all. As you can see, we got a parallelogram right here. Next problem, we got a square. And we're going to mix in. We're going to drop in a little bit of the rectangles, okay? A lot of these parallelograms, they may seem intimidating. You may look at them and you might be like, oh, man, I could handle three sides of a triangle before. That's a little too much for me. It ain't too much for nobody. We're going to get these and we're going to knock them out, okay, ladies and gentlemen, because that's what we do best, all right? Now I got a big problem right here, and that's because I got my little tablet upside down. I'm right on the wrong part, but you know what? Now we back at it. We back at it again here, ladies and gentlemen, so let's go ahead and get it popping. All right, first things first, parallelogram. What are we working with here? What are we working with here? Well, as you can see, I just circled what we're working with here. We're working with the perimeter, and what we got to know about perimeter is we got to add all sides. Now, I'm going to tell you something, though. That doesn't mean add the insides. It means we're going to add what's on the outside. We're going to go ahead and add this. We're going to go ahead and add that right there. We're going to go ahead and add that right there because it's basically like you were uh, making a little bordet or something around the shape. You uh, tracing the shape and stuff. Of course, perhaps tracing is not the best, but that's essentially what we're going to do. We're going to add all, not just side, but the sides here, okay, the sides. And as you can see, quadrilateral has how many sides? That's four sides. So we're going to have to add the four sides up. So yet again, add all sides. I can set it up real basic style. We're going to get 267.7 plus, well, if that side's 267.7, I wonder what this side is. 267.7. Opposite sides of these parallelograms are congruent. That's one of the beautiful things about this. So you got 267 plus another 267.7. We got 581 at the bottom, well, 581.1, you know what I'm saying? So that means at the top, we also got another 581.1, because opposite sides are what? They congruent, that's right. So we're going to go ahead and add that to 581.1 and another 581.1. But you know what? Some of y'all may be a little bit up there. Maybe why, why do we have to add all these numbers? Why would you want to add them? We got... Two 267.7s, we got two 581.1s. So why won't we theorize a little formula, a little way to do this? How about we just do 267.7 plus 581.1, and then we get that answer, and we double it. Hey, that might be something working for you. That might be something coming out of our brain, something coming out of our brain, making sure that you understand. Maybe we get that same answer. Essentially, what we did is we did something called we factored, okay? Well, essentially, no, we didn't factor it yet, okay? Because there's really nothing that we, you know, you didn't. But what we could have done is we combined, you know, look, I'll go ahead and write it up here. The mathematical thing is what we did was multiply two times 267.7. And then we went ahead and added it to two times 581.1. Because we don't have to add 581.1 twice. We can just multiply by 2. That's why we learned about multiplication. And once we go to this right here, once we do this part right here. Okay, I don't want to use that one. Can't even see the color anymore, man. Jeez, Louise. Once we do that one right there, then we could do something called factor out. We could factor out. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, I'll even write it out. We could factor out. That means what we're doing is we're, since we're multiplying both of those numbers by the same number, which is 2, we could go ahead and factor out. That means we're going to take that 2 and we're going to factor it out. That means we're going to pull it outside. We're going to pull it outside. We're going to pull outside these parentheses right here. You see that parentheses? You see that parentheses? We're pulling it out, we're pulling the 2 out, and we're putting that stuff that we're multiplying each of them by 2 by inside. Notice how the operation was plus? That's why we're going to keep it plus. What we did is a little bit of algebra right there. It's called factoring out. We factored out a 2 
from that equation up there, that two parentheses, 267.7 plus two parentheses, 581.1. We factored out a two, all right? There's some algebra coming on here, but it's all good. It ain't hard. What we're doing is factoring out that two, and so we came up with 267.7. We're going to hit enter. We're going to do 581.1. We're going to hit plus, and then we're going to hit two multiply. Now, that doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. We could have just added those four numbers like we had originally wrote right there, and that's cool too. But at the end of the day, you get the same exact answers, okay? You get the same exact answers, all right? So that's just how we do it, okay? Now, anyways, sorry about that. I had the little thing come up on my screen, and I wanted to make sure, hey, you know what? I didn't want to listen to that. I want to be listening to the good stuff. I want to listen to that Mozart. But we got that 1.70, 1.70. Let me go ahead and just get back in writing mode. Times 10 to the third. But not just that. We got that, wait a second, were you able to see that? I wonder if you were able to see that. I was busting out that YouTube, right? Busting out that YouTube, okay? Nah, you didn't get to see that. You didn't get to see that, but it's okay. Yeah, I'm listening to them on YouTube right now. I'm listening to YouTube. I'm listening to some little bit of the Mozart. Sometimes, you know, for me, at least for me, I don't know about you guys, but for me, when I want to do some math problems, I got to listen to that music that's going to make me do those math problems correctly. And for me, that music is a little bit of Mozart, a little bit of that brain activation music, you know what I'm saying? That's how I do this work. Got to get my mind ready for these problems by working out that math muscle. And math muscles are really communicated with music a lot. They're kind of the same type of muscles, all right? Music is just, is just putting patterns into notes. And that's what mind, math is. Using your mind to put numbers in patterns. And you're just using it. You're just making it all work. And that's why I like listening to my Mozart right here, all right? So as you can see, I mean, I kind of wrote a little sloppy. Let me go in and clean that up a little bit. But really what we're doing over here is we're doing 1,000. Well, let me go ahead and make sure I've got my little pen back on right there. We got 1,000. Oh, my God. That looks sloppy again. 1,700. All right. All right. Next problem. Okay. Let's next problem. Let's write this. Let's wipe this. Let's get it done. All right. So that's our first parallelogram right there. Let's keep it going. We got a square coming up. Now, we got to know our formulas for squares. Squares are not difficult, okay, ladies and gentlemen? But the formula for a square is basically length times width. But a square is very special. Square have congruent sides. That means all sides on this square are equal. They're equal. So we could go ahead and do this different formula. We can get the side and square it. Oh, wait, I wonder why I said squared. I wonder why I said squared. Well, because a square has sides of both dimensions are the same so it's basically grabbing the sky, side and we're understanding that we could create a square from that side that's why it's called squared we also call it to the second power let's go ahead and do it so in this problem all we got to do is go point two five zero two and we're going to raise that second power and guess what we just found that area easy work easy problem easy work so point two five zero two we put in our calculator and hit blue squared and we got ourselves an answer 6.26 times 10 to the negative second. Or if you want to write in standard form, 0 0.0626. And we call it, and we get it out of there. Let's take a look at another problem. All right, all right, so this one's a little different. But it ain't super hard, but it ain't super easy either. The thing about a square is that all four sides are the same. There's actually a formula we could theorize for perimeter of a square. Since all four sides are the same, you're going to get the side and multiply it by four. That's what it means. Four sides are the same, we get four multiplied by the sides. But we already have the perimeter. We don't have the sides. And we need that side. We need this right here. We need that to do the area form. Remember what we said the area form was? It was sides to the second power. So how can we solve for the sides? Well, that's easy. We work backwards. Instead of multiplying by two, four, we're gonna divide both sides by four. And guess what happens to my fours? They cancel out. So that formula really is perimeter divided by four equals to my side. And once we get that side, we go ahead and do that area. So let's go ahead and get it popping. All right, so I'm gonna start with 289, 289. So let's start with 289. I'm even gonna substitute it down here, 289. And we're gonna divide it by four. All right, so 289 enter, four divide. Now, some of you need to know these math tricks. You're gonna hit dot d decimal 289. Then you can hit decimal four, and you already make that fraction, and that's cool. But we divide it, and we get around, around 72.3 or 7.23 times 10 to the first. Don't write it down. Don't write it down. It better stay in that calculator, because that calculator 
has a lot more numbers than 72.3. It just rounds it to three significant digits, all right? So anyways, I got that number in my calculator. Now, what do I got to do with that 72.3 or 7.23 times 10 to the first power? Well, guess what that formula says right there we got to do? What does that formula say? Well, we got to square it. So I'm going to hit blue square. Some of y'all might want to do that. Some of you want to do something else. You hit 2y to the x. Hey, both of them are right. Both of them are correct. And we get our answer. We got 5.22 times 10 to the third. Or if you already see it this way, 5,200. And 20 and we call it a day easy work At the end of the day ladies and gentlemen the more and more we practice this math the easier it becomes so let's get it let's get it all right we got another problem right here so again the perimeter formula of a square is 4 times s what do we got to do we got to divide by 4 on both sides what happens to my fours cancel out so we're left with the perimeter divided by 4 equals to my side so let's do it 1, 2, 2, 1 divided by 4. That's our first step. That's going to give us our side. That's going to give us the measurement of the side of this square. 1, 2, 2, 1, enter, 4 divide. I see 305, or 3.05 times 10 to the second. Hopefully that's what you see. But we ain't done yet. It's not asking for the side. It's asking for the area. How do we do that area? How do we do it? I think I heard you. Area is going to be side to the second power, all right? So we're going to leave that 3.05 in our calculator. We're going to hit blue, and we're going to square it. And we should have gotten 9.32 times 10 to the fourth. 9.32 times 10 to the fourth. Or if you want to do it this way, 93,200. Easy, easy. Look, these problems are easy. You just got to get them. We got to do them. So don't ever think you can't do them. So let's just set up this bad boy. We don't have to do all that equations, all that work, if we already know what's going on. And hopefully by this time, a little bit of that practice, we already know what's going on. We're going to get the perimeter, cut it into fourths. Cut it into four equal pieces. That's going to give us the length of one side. And once we do that, we get side, we square it, and that's going to give us the area. That's what it is. So let's do it. Seven, two, eight, one. We're going to go ahead and hit enter. 4 divide, I'm looking at 1.82 times 10 to the third. Easy work. Then we're going to go ahead and hit blue, x squared, and we got it. 3.31 times 10 to the sixth power. Squares are easy. Squares are easy work. If you want to write it the good old standard notation way, 331,000. Actually, it's a little bit more than 331,000. Actually, 310,000. When you got times 10 to the sixth power... That means that first digit, that three, is actually going to be million. Three million, okay? So that was a little error on my part. But guess what? It's all good. We got the right answer. That's the good thing about scientific notation. You write it the way the calculator tells you, you always get it correct. But, you know, sometimes you could save a little bit of time if your mind could see it, okay? But see, I might have made that mistake right now. I caught it. Sometimes I don't catch it. Just know what it is. Now, I like this problem a lot because... We got something that we could come up with here. We're looking for we're looking for one of these sides for that area. That area problem for a rectangle is a little different. It's not side to the second power. It's actually base times height. Or some people like to call it length times width. It really doesn't matter. What matters is we got two perpendicular lines. These dimensions. What's a perpendicular line? Well, it's that right angle right here. We see that little right angle. And we're going to get those two sides connected to that right angle. We're going to multiply them. And that's all area is. We didn't have to do that for a square. We could just do the second power because all sides were the same. But this one, we're going to have to multiply base and height. Or length and width. It really doesn't matter. Okay, It's really the same thing. We're just multiplying the two dimensions that create that perpendicular line. Okay, That right angle. But here's the problem. I don't know what this side is. Or this side. I know what this side is. So if I start substituting, if I start thinking about this, my perimeter is really going to equal to two bases plus two heights. Remember what I said about factoring? You remember that? Where if you multiply them by two of the same numbers, you can go ahead and factor that out. Well, That's what I mean. Our formula really could turn into this. We can go ahead and put two outside of a parentheses. We're factoring out a two since, as you can see, both of these are being multiplied by two. 
And then we could just get our base plus height in the parentheses. We can add our base and height first and then multiply by two. Why is this a big deal to me? Because now we could actually work this backwards real easy. First step, first step. The last step when working forwards is to multiply by two. So the first step to undo is divide both sides by two. So really what we're gonna do here is that the twos cancel out and now we're left with perimeter divided by two is equal to the base plus the height. All right, all right. Now we're not looking, we're not looking for the height, we got the height. So we're looking for this base, we're looking for this one right here, we're looking for that. We're looking for that, that's what's missing right here. This X is basically the bottom. But it really doesn't matter which one we're looking for because now the next step is whichever one we're looking for, the other one, we're gonna have to subtract it from the right. Because why subtract? Because the opposite of addition is subtraction. Hopefully you said that, all right? Whatever you do on the right, we gotta do to the left. Notice how this plus H and this minus H cancels each other out. And so we're really left with the perimeter divided by two minus the height is now equal to the base. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's substitute it. So in this problem, we're gonna get 350.9, divide that bad boy by two. We're gonna take away our 54.67, and we're gonna be left with the missing dimension. Let's go ahead and do it. So 350.9, enter, two, divide. Then we're gonna get 54.67, subtract. I got 121, or 1.21 times 10 to the second. That's what I see. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and use as the base, all right? And now that we're looking for the area, there's only one last step. We're gonna go ahead and type 54.67 because that's the height. We see them both on my calculator. As you can see, I see them both right there. How do we connect those? Well, we're gonna hit multiply. And guess what we just found out? We just found out that for this problem, the area is 6.60 times 10 to the third. Or if you wanna really get this correct, well, in a different way, in standard notation way, we got 6,600, all right? Third power, third power, 10 to the third power is 1,000. That's why it's 6,000, okay? That's why we could think about it right that. Let's go ahead and get to the next problem. All right, we see a parallelogram, and this parallelogram looks a little intense. Some people freak out with this parallelogram. They don't understand that, you know, a parallelogram is essentially the same formula as a rectangle. Now, I'll show you why. I'll show you why. The beautiful thing about a parallelogram is that they even draw our little triangle right here. You see this little triangle right here? That's a beautiful triangle. Now, some people think we're gonna have to use that triangle formula and we're gonna, nah, nah, we don't have to do any of that. Because that triangle right here, let's pretend I'm cutting it out. I'm gonna cut it out, I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up. But if I pick it up, I wanna put it in the space that it fits in. And that triangle, if you actually want, it would fit exactly in this space right here. You draw this triangle, that same triangle, we move it over here, and guess what shape we created right there. Now, of course, I really shouldn't shade it in. I really shouldn't shade it in right there because I wanna make sure I see that right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and not use this purple. I'm gonna go ahead and use this color, but you know, my triangle may not look perfect, right? But that triangle fits right there. And we got ourselves a rectangle. That's why it's the exact same formula as a rectangle. Base times height. Now remember what I said about base times height? The base and height are the ones touching the whoa, 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 right angle. You see that right angle? I see that right angle right there. You see it? I see it. And that's what we're gonna go ahead and look for. Whoa, 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 whoa. I see this. Is that touching that right angle? Is that, yeah, you better believe it. So our height is gonna be 3,302. What's that base gonna be? Hmm, it's not at the bottom here, so I guess it's 5,487. You better not touch that 5,487. That's not even a part of the right angle connection. It's not even there. This is basura. We ain't gonna need it for this problem. So don't get tricked by this. Hey, well, it's not on the bottom, but that doesn't mean anything because that base could also be on top. We flip that thing around. Now that one, two, three, four, five, is actually the bottom. So that bottom, that base doesn't necessarily mean it's on the bottom. It could be the same as the top, all right? Some people don't know that, but you know what? You know that because you working with Mr. 500 and I'm here to teach you. And hopefully you remember that stuff because we gotta make this sure that we could do real good on that test. Easy problem, easy answer. 4.08 times 10 to the seventh. 
Look, I wouldn't even write this in standard notation. I wouldn't even do it. But I got some kids who want to show that they could do it, and they could do it. I know you could do it. But sometimes writing all those zeros, may, may, it just might be easier to write times 10 to the 7th. And you got you don't got to think. You just write what the calculator tells you. But it's really up to you, okay? I, anything bigger than 7, I don't even touch. I don't even like touching anything bigger than 6, okay? But for sure, 7, nah, that's too much. That's too much. All right, so this problem right here. Same as the, as the parallelogram, as the previous one. The formula is area times equals base times high. Well, in this problem, you just got to identify. Once you get good at this, you don't need to do any of this hard work, like draw pictures and all this stuff. I'm doing it because I want to show you the math. But really, look at that right angle. You got this right here and that right there. You see that? Those 70.7, that's touching the right angle. And that 172.5, that's touching the right angle. So those are the two we multiply. We're going to do area equals 172.5. And we're going to multiply that by 70.7. Easy work, easy problem. And that's why we get these easy answers. Easy nine points on the test. And that's how we're going to show the state of Texas that we the best. Because it's easy. It's easy, but you just got to know what to do. So 100, no, 1.22 times 10 to the fourth. Or if you want to write in standard form, 12,200. Easy problem, easy work. Hey, you better watch out with that legibility. I know they'll probably give me that. They'd give me that one because it does look like a zero. But if that little, if that thing up here, you see that little thing right there? That thing up here was a little longer. I mean, they might think it's a six. Penmanship matters, ladies and gentlemen. Penmanship matters, all right? So this problem, easy problem. Hopefully, you could go ahead and set it up and do it without my help. Give you a little bit of time. So hopefully, you multiplied 205 times, yeah. 421. You do that, easy work, easy answers. 205, enter. 421, multiply, and we end up with our answer. 8.63 times 10 to the fourth, or 86,300. Easy work. Next problem. Okay, this one's a little different. They don't have the triangle with that rectangle, sorry, that right angle inside. Don't matter. 93 and 97. 93 times 97 and we get our answer 93 and 97 multiply and look i know there's some number sense tricks maybe some of y'all know these number sense tricks okay but you know i'm not here to be teaching number sense but it's there i mean there's a little number sense trick right here like you know we do basically 9 times 10 why 10 because 3 plus 7 makes 10 okay 9 times 10 is 90 90 right and then we get 3 times 7 is 21. That's that number sense trick. There's a little number sense trick right here, okay? Essentially, since that 3 and that 7 add up to 10, we could think of it as 90 times 100. 9 times 1 is 9 with the three zeros at the end. But how do we get the last two? Well, we do 3 times 7. And that's 21. You add these numbers together, 9,000 plus 21, boom, boom, we call it day 921. But you better not put 9021 as your answer, because calculators only worries about three significant digits. Once you put that fourth one in, it is incorrect format, down the drain. So I'm telling you right now, sometimes it's just best to use a calculator, make sure you got the correct stuff. But hey, if you do number sense, Hey, man, sometimes these tricks help you out, reasonableness, you know, and you can do stuff a little faster. Sometimes your mind is a little faster than using little fingers and touching on the calculator, okay? But it's all what matters to you, okay? It's all about what works for you. All right, all right, I like this problem a lot. We got a rectangle, and remember that formula don't change, base times high. But now we ain't working forwards, we working backwards. We moving backwards, yeah, buddy, we looking to the back, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and see what we're going to do. So... We're going to go ahead and divide both sides by the base because that's what we got. We got that base right here, and we're looking for that height. We're looking for that height. Now, if you want to call it the length, the width, it don't matter what you call it, but you're going to divide by one of these dimensions. So we're going to divide by the base. And guess what our area formula now turns into? It turns into a height formula. We're going to get that area divided by the base, and now it's going to give us the answer for the height, which is exactly what we are looking for. That's right. So we substitute in these problems correctly, and let's go ahead and get these answers correctly. 3.37 times 10 to the 8th. We're going to go ahead and get that divided by 23,581. And that's going to give us the answer for the height. So let's go ahead and put in that calculator. 3.37 times 10, which is the E button. 
the E means times 10 to the exponent of, we're going to put that 8. We're going to hit enter. 2, 3, 5, 8, 1, divide. And guess what? We got 14,300. Or that scientific notation form, 1.43 times 10 to the 4th. Easy work, easy problems, let's make it happen. Easy. All right, we got another one. Again, again, you know, we don't have to always do all this work. I mean, if you understand what we're going to do, we get the area divided by the base, we get the height. That's all it is. Okay, you don't want to write it like that? You get the area divided by the length, we get the width. You get the area divided by the width, you get the length. You get the area divided by the height, you get the base. It don't matter. They're all the same. You're just going to get the area and you're going to divide. So we're going to get, now you better put the correct number of zeros. You put the wrong number of zeros, you're going to get the wrong answer here. And I've seen it so many times. The first three digits are correct. But the exponent's off, game over. You lost. And we don't want to lose. We don't want to lose to silly mistakes. So we're going to put decimal 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.000287 because that's the area. We're going to get that. We're going to go ahead and divide it by 0 0.0082. And we call it, we call it 3.50 times 10 to the negative third. Or if you want to think about it this way, hey, remember times 10 to the third was a thousand? Well, negative third isn't going to be a thousand here. It's actually going to mean that we're going to write that three, not in the thousands place, but in the thousandths place. That three is in the thousandths. It's kind of like thousand. It's got that TH to represent that it's on the other side of the decimal, okay? It's a fractional part. It's a little bitty piece. It's not thousands like big money. It's small money. This ain't even a cent if we think about it in money terms. But that's how we write it in standard form. All right, ladies and gentlemen, easy work. Got to make sure you understand that mind. Got to make sure you understand that mind. And with Mr. Delgado, Mr. 500 here, you're going to make sure we understand these problems. All right, so let's get to it. All right, same old, same old. We got an area problem. We're going to get 0 0.00753. Divide that by 0 0.0529. And let's do it. 0 0.00753. Enter. 0 0.0529. Divide. And we got our answer. 1.42 times 10 to the negative first. You think that's easy? Well, let's even write it an easier way. Instead of looking at times 10 to the first, which is the tens place, we're going to put our number, the one, in the tenths place. Now, make sure it looks like a little bit of a one, okay? That one's looking a little bit more like a, that one looks a little bit more like a, I don't know, a little seven there. Make it look like a one, please, ladies and gentlemen. We don't want to get this stuff wrong because of penmanship. But that's it. We got another, oh, I like this problem. Hey, you know me, Mr. 500 here likes these hard problems, man. And this one ain't that hard, but it's going to make sure that we actually know how to set up this problem. Because we're going to have to figure out the missing dimension, which is the height here. Or the length, or whatever you want to call it, don't matter, the missing dimension. And then we're going to have to add it to the 35.89 and then multiply by 2. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. We're going to get 698. We're going to get 698. We're going to get 698. We're going to divide it by 35.89. And that's going to give us our height. So let's do it. 698 and 35.89. Divide. And I get around 19.4. Or 1.94 times 10 to the first power, okay? But that ain't done yet. We want that perimeter. You start writing 19.4 here, you write 19.4 here, guess what? You got a big old X on your test. And we don't want no X's on our test. I don't want none of that. I want to see you guys being successful. We got to make sure we're answering the question being asked. It doesn't ask for the height. It's asked for perimeter. So, we can get that 19.4. You don't write it down. You better not write it down. I always tell you, don't write it down. You better stay on that calculator. Because now our next step is going to get 35.89. Immediately type it in. Hit plus to connect it. I see 55.3. You might think you're done, but we don't just have one base. We don't just have one height. How many do we have? Bam! And that's why we're going to get two multiplied. And our correct answer here is 111. Or 1.11 times 10 to the second. Notice 10 to the second is 100. That's why my one, my first leading digit, my leading digit right here, this one, is in the which place value? You see it? The hundreds place value. That's what standard notation really means with that scientific notation. Math makes sense, ladies and gentlemen. You just got to understand it. And the more you work with Mr. 500 here, you're going to be understanding that math because that's all I'm about. All right, next problem. Same old, same old. We're going to get that two, two, six, three, nine, eight, two, zero. And we're going to divide that by seven. Two, six, eight. 
I'm gonna just go write all the steps together as one big hybrid formula. And now that's gonna give us our height. But immediately once you get the height, we're gonna add it to the base. So that means we're gonna add it to 7268. And you think you're done, but you ain't done. Because after you do that, we don't have only one height, we don't have only one base, we got two. And that's why we're gonna multiply this by two. And that's why we're gonna have another big old parentheses. Now in the calculator test, they don't put two parentheses. They'll put maybe a bracket or a brace after it. They'll put something else. But we're gonna multiply all that by two at the very end. So let's do it. Two, two, three. Sorry, hey, you don't put a three. I put a six, okay? I messed up. I said three, but look, you don't believe me? I put the six. It's not about what you say sometimes. It's about what you actually do, okay? So that's a life lesson right there. Don't be all talking these things. Don't be worried about the talk. Be worried about what you're doing, okay? Anybody could talk. But actions speak louder than words, all right? So we're going to put 226-39820. Hit enter. 7268, hit divide. And then we got ourselves our height. Our height is around 3.12 times 10 to the third. But we don't write that down. We're going to go ahead and hit 7268 and hit add. And now we got half of our perimeter next step is to multiply by two to multiply and now we got the whole thing which means we got our whole answer right there 2.08 times 10 to the fourth easy easy work ladies and gentlemen easy work all right let's another one same old same old we're gonna do nine one four how many zeros that one two three four five man hey, hey that might work for you if you if you can't count the zeros put your pencil down and count them with that pencil so i got five zeros right there we're gonna get that cut it into itty bitty pieces into how many itty bitty pieces into eight eight thousand one hundred sixteen pieces we're gonna cut into that many pieces which means we're dividing and then again we're gonna get that add that eight hundred 8,000, sorry, and 16. And then I'll use a different one. I'll use a bracket. I mean, a, yeah, yeah, what is that called? A bracket. And then we're going to multiply all that bad boy by two. And that gives us the perimeter because we got two heights and two bases, okay? Nine, one, four, one, two, three, four, five zeros. Enter. Eight, one, one, six, divide. So I got about 1.13 times 10 to the fourth. That's going to be our base for this problem. You get eight, one, one, six. We hit plus. Then we hit two multiply, and our perimeter for this bad boy is 3.88 times 10 to the fourth. You want to think of it as standard notation? We go 38,800. Easy work, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. All right, next problem. All right, we got a little problem right here. I like this. I like this as a little square. We got to use that area formula. The area formula is side to the second power. Why do we need to use that area formula? Well, that's what we start with. Uh-oh, I don't like that circle. That's what we start with. Then we're going to have to use that perimeter formula. That perimeter formula is 4 times our side. But they don't give us that side. They give us that area. So what we got to make sure we know how to do is we got to undo this squared. You see that squared? We got to undo that squared. Or a second power. Well, how do we undo a squared? We square root. That cancels each other out. Once we square root the left, we square root the right. The square root cancels out with this 2. And now we're good to go. So we're gonna get the area, we're gonna square root it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna get my area is gonna be one, two, five point eight seven nine, and we're gonna square root that. Yeah, buddy. One, two, five point eight seven nine, square root. After we get that square root, we got our side. So my side for this square is gonna be 11.2. See, if you know a little bit of math, that makes complete sense. Because what's 11 times 11? is 121. What's 12 times 12? It's 144. So it's going to be closer to 121 because our area is about 125. That means the square root is going to be closer to 11. And 11.2-ish or 1.12 times 10 to the first power is a completely reasonable answer. Once you know that math, you can understand that the calculator is telling you some correct answers here. But we ain't done. You put 1.12, boom, big X. That's not what we're looking for. We ain't looking for that answer. We looking for the perimeter. So our next step is we're gonna multiply by what? By four. So we hit four multiply, and now we got a good answer. Uh oh. And not only do we got a good answer here, we got we got a good team right here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, buddy. We got those 49ers right here. You see that four point 49? Woo! All right.
guys. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still excited. My 49ers are having a good season. And, well, you know, I don't uh, It doesn't have to do a lot about it with math. But, you know, gold rush time, 1849. That's how California ended up becoming part of the union because all that gold, that big old gold rush. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why we got to respect the dates, respect the numbers, and you respect my 49ers. That's what I got to say about that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's go ahead and get that out of there. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Look, parallelograms, same old, same old areas, base times height. So we got the area. They're looking for the height. They even designated the height. That doesn't really happen in a lot of problems. But we got to make sure we divide by the correct one. That right angle is right here. You guys see that right angle? I see it right there. So which one's touching that right angle? Is it the 618? Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Don't even think about it. It's that 1121. So we're going to get 671480 divided by 1121. And now we're going to get these right answers. So let's do it. 671. Eight. No, oh, I was gonna. Now my talk and my actions messed up. I didn't. I didn't mean to put the eight. I meant to put the six, seven, one, four, eight, zero. Hit enter. One, one, two, one. Divide, and I got myself my answer. Five ninety nine or scientific notation form. Five point nine nine times ten to the second power. That's right. That's right, buddy. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, we got one more. It looks like it's the last problem. Yeah, it's the last problem. Then we got a whole bunch of black coming at that because yep, it's the end of the tunnel. Yeah, in my tunnel, as you can see, there's a lot of light, a lot of white in this tunnel right here with this white paper. But when we're done, it's over. And this is the last problem before we're done. <laughs> it's going to make me want to cry. <laughs> but it's all right. We'll just see you next time, okay? But let's make sure we can do this problem. Yet again, we got that area formula. Area of parallelogram is base times height. We got to divide both sides by the base so we could solve for that height. So my bases on the right cancel out and my real formula's area divided by my base equals the high. We substitute, we put 4.487 times 10 to the fifth and we divide it by the base. Now, which one's touching that right angle? Which one? Yeah, it ain't 670, you tell me that. Uh-oh, we're gonna have to watch this whole thing all over again. It ain't that one, it's 987. And I know you guys said 987 because you guys are smart. You're messing with Mr. 500 and you're messing with yourself. If you're watching this video, that means you got the aptitude to keep learning. So don't give up on yourself. You're going to be the best. You just got to work hard. Never give up. Work hard. Hard work always pays off. You remember that, all right? So we're going to hit 4.487 E to the fifth power or 4.487 times 10 to the fifth. That's exactly what it means. We're going to hit enter. Then we're going to hit 987. We're going to hit divide. And we got our answer. And we got ourselves a day. Oh, a good day. Because we ended up doing these problems together. We got Mr. 500 here. We got you here. And we doing this hard work. We doing these hard math problems. And we getting them right. And that's what matters. We working hard. We getting better. We are going to be a success. Just not for this calculators test. But for the rest of our mathematic career. Because that's what matters. Always learn. Always be the best. Always look forward. Always look ahead for that excellence. And that excellence starts with watching this video with Mr. 500. I hope you had a good time because I always have a good time when I'm working with you guys. So peace out and enjoy the rest of your day. Mr. 500 out. Look for that excellence. That's right. <laughs>